White Chicks is a film directed by Keenan Ivory Wayans and stars his two younger brothers, Marlon and Sean. They are two black FBI officers who, when a case starts to go bad, decide to protect their own backs by becoming young white women, through the magic of special effects makeup. That may sound a bit like Mrs. Doubtfire, but the key difference between White Chicks and Mrs. Doubtfire is when Robin Williams becomes Mrs. Doubtfire, he looks like somebody who could be called Mrs. Doubtfire. In this film, when the Wayans are transformed, they look like mannequins sculpted out of white dog shit. Take a look. Definitely something different about the two of you. <gasps> Collagen. <gasps> yeah. You little witch, how did you know? <laughs> Honestly, it's not as if they don't look like white women. It's not as if they don't look like women. They don't look human. The whole premise of the film is they're meant to be the spitting image of two people under their protection. This is what the two people look like. Put makeup on this. I am so freaking pissed. This is what the Wayan brothers dressed up as those two people look like. Take it all down, all down, all down. Can you see the fatal flaw in this? Okay, so it's quickly established in the film that the Wayans have used special effects makeup before to bust people. Here they are pretending to be Cubans. Of course, even this setup doesn't make sense. The guys who are delivering the drugs don't even know what the recipient is meant to look like anyway. So why dress up? Why dress up and behave like that? So the boys mess up and they bust the wrong people. And for no reason at all, they take off their disguises. Hey, tell money is ice cream delivery is here. Never mind. Now, as you might suspect from the intro, this film is full of stereotypes. It stereotypes rich white girls, it stereotypes Cubans, it even stereotypes one of the lead's girlfriends. You just had a couple of drinks. I know. I called the bar. They said you left at 7.45. I checked MapQuest, Marcus. It only takes six minutes to get there from here. So if you've got somebody on the side, Marcus, you need to tell me. Baby, listen to what you just said. MapQuest said it takes six minutes to get here. I got here in eight which means there's two minutes unaccounted for. If I was cheating on you, don't you think I need more than two minutes? I mean, what did they say to that actress? Can you do it as if a white person wrote it? She might as well be a black sassy nurse on a reception desk. Anyway, one of the characters who isn't really a stereotype, but I feel could have done with some stereotyping, is the chief. He just seems too nice. Oh, well, you let those drug dealers go because you acted illegally by not informing us because you wanted to bust them yourselves. You silly boys. I mean, for me, a police chief or an FBI chief is the type of guy who's probably spent years of his life going, is this your daughter? I'm sorry you had to see that. Is this your daughter? I'm sorry you had to see that. This is a really bad one. Right? I mean, you'd expect him to be kind of hardened. There's nothing intelligent about this. Now, I'm tired of your escapades. I want them to stop. The last thing I need is to be the laughing stock of the Bureau. And furthermore, the... But, quite possibly in the only moment of this film that made me laugh, he is described in quite a wonderful way. What a beautiful chocolate man! <laughs> I probably would never describe somebody as a beautiful chocolate man, but if I was going to describe somebody as a beautiful chocolate man, it would be him. Anyway, through a nonsense contrivance, Sean and Marlon Wayans have to pretend to become the Hiltons. Only it's not the Hiltons, it's the Wilsons. I thought it was going to be the Hiltons, it's clearly meant to be the Hiltons, but it's not the Hiltons. This film was made on 37 million dollars. You think they could have got the Hiltons? Maybe they didn't want to be in the film, I don't know. So anyway, the Wayans boys are assigned to protect not the Hiltons from a possible kidnapping. But of course, because they're rich bitches, they're not cooperative. So obviously, they decide, well, what's the easiest thing to do? The easiest thing to do would be if we transform ourselves into... Into what? Words escape me. Grotesque replicas. So they're going to make up crew to come around. Now, before I show you this little clip, while it's playing, I want you to think to yourself, someone actually sat around a table with other writers and said, so we're agreed. Glasses make people look smart. So all of them will wear glasses. Where are the white women at? Let's do this. I know it's a little thing, but someone has decided to do that. Why? And also, look at the guy who speaks, presumably the head of the crew. Where are the white women at? Let's do this. 
What is he, a fucking intern? Look at the guy at the back, he's twice as old as him. What, is this his second career or something? Well, he was pretty lucky to find this child prodigy in making people look like white women or not. You see, even though this movie is ridiculous and isn't meant to be taken seriously, it constantly tries to make us think that the Wayans in makeup are meant to be exactly the same, the spitting image of the Wilsons in real life. And they don't. They look like some blotched corpses of some drag queens. They look like they've been dead for five days. They look like they've been fished out of the fucking Hudson River. Keep an eye out for them. If it's going down, it's gonna go down right here. I mean, look at them! Did no one on set say, this is stupid? It's the equivalent of one of them turning up in a Ronald Reagan mask and someone saying, Ronald Reagan, I thought you were dead. They would have been better to turn up in burkas. It's moronic. I'm sorry I'm going on about this. I just cannot believe that they did a makeup test before making this movie and went, spot on. That, that is the shit. You, you, Marlon, you look like a white woman. So obviously, by its very nature, this movie is playing with race. But is it racist? Well, in my honest opinion, I don't think it is racist. I think it certainly plays to stereotypes, and maybe you could accuse it of being lazy, but it's not malicious at all. In fact, it doesn't seem to go into race in any way apart from superficially. It's quite disappointing in that regard. It's just dumb racial puns like Blackie Chan. But I do wonder, what would the film have been like if it was two white guys pretending to be two black women? I think it probably would have got a different reaction. In fact, even if it was the Wayans pretending to be two white guys, I think it would have got a different reaction. But I don't know why that is. Maybe it's something to do with races being threatened. I don't know, I'm not white anyway. I'm Aboriginal Yorkshire. I think it's important to say that this film isn't terrible. It's not good, but it's not Norbert. I mean, it's very much like any other film from 2003 which fits into the trashy comedy genre. You kind of expect Adam Sandler to pop in at any moment. In fact, I'd say Adam Sandler's films are more racist than this. If anything, it's way less controversial and gross out than I expected. In fact, I'd say it isn't controversial at all. But bearing in mind it's a PG-13, they did include this. I can't believe that you just said that! Say what? <laughs> the N-word? So? Nobody's around. Yeah. How did they get away with that? I thought with PG-13 you're only allowed one soft fuck. I mean the word fuck. The film has very little tension and it quickly gets off track. The writers clearly didn't give a shit about the plot. The premise is, it's the Wayans, and they're pretending to be white women. And they're in white women situations, I guess. Squeeze me? Oh, no, you dick. The plot moves from something about a kidnapping to something about a rivalry between two sets of rich bitches. I don't care, and I don't think the audience was meant to care at all. It's really just a string of different set pieces and scenes where the Wayans act all goofy. kind of alright. I mean, once the rival heiresses go into a nightclub and end up having a dance-off, you start thinking, this film isn't for me. This film is for 14 and 15 year old girls and boys who've been duped into the cinema. Want some of this? Bring it on, sisters! Okay, let's do it! Five, six, seven, eight! It's over 9,000! I think they must have lobbied really hard to get it rated PG-13, because its audience are not adults. So there's this whole rivalry thing, and they end up on the beach all together. And check out this look into camera. Skank alert! There is a terrible place prepared for sinners in the northern regions of the third heaven where even now all the angels carry savage weapons. There's also a weird sub-story about Terry Crews falling in love with one of the Wayans, which is basically a less sophisticated version of Elmer Fudd falling in love with Bugs Bunny when he's in drag. I want to know, are you naughty or nice? <laughs> Sorry, I'm not interested. I'll take that as naughty. <laughs> so the film ends at a fashion show, and the real Wilson sisters turn up. 
So you've got the Wayans dressed as the Wilson sisters and the real sisters. And everyone's like, oh, but they look the same. And there's a line that Terry Crews says. And if you listen to it, you can tell he doesn't believe this shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, they change so quickly. Yeah, that's what it is. They change so quickly. It's not as if the people who were just on are twice the weight of the people who are on now. Just what? What? Also, the movie seems to strangely want to remind us at times that they're dudes. Like, yeah, I know. Yo, what's up, money? You got a problem? What you looking at my ass for? Nah, yo, hold my poodle. Hold my poodle. Hey, yo, what's up? Y'all got a problem? Y'all want some of this? You want some of this, punk? What? What, boy, what? I take the ball for you. Marcus, get out of here. I got this for you. Kiss my black ass. Walk, cut it out. What? He looking at me like I'm some kind of girl, man. You are a girl. And you better start acting like one or you're going to be an unemployed girl. Oh, oh, thank God. I forgot I was dressed as a woman. That guy is just an entitled heterosexual. That's fine. I thought he was a gay. That's what that scene implies. Him getting pissed off with the guy doing that is one thing. But then him relaxing when he realizes, oh, it's because the guy thinks I'm a woman. Isn't that homophobic? It's okay if a straight guy does that to a, a woman, but if a gay guy does that to another guy, that's weird, that's bad. It just seems so weird. This film was made in 2003, it can't be that backward. I don't think that this film is homophobic, but I do feel like there are homophobic tones. I don't think they're intentional at all, but I feel like they're there, just in those bits. They just seem desperate to tell us, yeah, they're in drag, but they're not gay. Should like to cut that cake. Mm. Hey, yo, hold it! <laughs> Hey, yo, you trying to look at my lumps? Inside your publicist, Tori, has been calling me non-stop about setting up an interview with you. Yeah, well, if I would have known you were so beautiful, I probably would have called you myself. <laughs> Before I go, here's one little fact to depress you. This film made $113 million. It was a huge box office success. But one good thing that came from it, it gave me a new sign-off. So... Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, you beautiful chocolate people.